Okay, this is problem number 35 from chapter 9. And this section is. Hang on. I have to write down the section number. Pretty sure it's the section. Oh, this is from section 5 slash 6 on Kirchhoff's laws in the frequency domain. So, that's what we're trying to learn. So we're trying to learn how to apply Kirchhoff's laws in the frequency domain. This is the circuit that we have. We have a V sub G there, and it's given that value there of 100 minus J50 volts. 20 ohms here, J5 inductor here, 12 ohm resistor here, J16 inductor there, V1, the voltage drop across the capacitor, which has value 140 plus J30 an impedance of minus J10, an independent current source here, which has 30 plus J20 amps. We're looking for that impedance, the one that connects VG and that I sub G, this node right here. Okay, so when I started to do this, just in looking at that, you know that you're going to either need KCL or KVL to solve that. Obviously, the voltage um, mesh currents wouldn't make a heck of a lot of sense. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. It can be solved either way. I prefer to use um, node voltage just because it looks, this circuit looks like, lends itself to that. I have this voltage, I have this voltage. It just lends itself to the node voltage method, in my opinion, and I would have fewer, fewer um, equations to solve it if I did a mesh current type of thing. So I chose the node voltage method for solving this, um, for finding um, that impedance, but I challenged the YouTube community to try it using something else. The um, obvious other choice would be um, the mesh current method. It's harder, uh, clumsier, but it should work. So that's my challenge to the YouTube community. Anyways, let's get started. So. This is an obvious node to take right here. This is the obvious second node to take, V1. So I'm just going to call this one Vx. So I'm going to write my first nodal equation at Vx and see where it takes me. Node voltage at V sub x. My equation here will be Vx minus Vg. That's over 20. Plus Vx over J5 plus Vx minus V1 over 12 plus 16, and that all better equal zero. Okay, well, when I did that, I realized there's a whole bunch of stuff that they gave me, a whole bunch of information. They told me this was 100 minus J50. So everywhere, so that's my VG. I have that information. And the other thing that they told me was what V1 was. V1 is right here, and that's 140 plus J30. So, then I realized, well heck, they gave me all the information that I need. This is one equation, one unknown. I can find that Vx, and that's what I did. So, whenever you have one equation, one unknown, always solve it to see where it takes you, because then, in this case, it took me to a very, very good place because I didn't have really ugly, um, a really ugly matrix with complex numbers to deal with. I'm missing a J here. By the way, you guys, um, please call me out when I make mistakes from speed um, because uh, it kills me. I make stupid little mistakes. I, I lose a J or a plus magically turns into a minus, etc., etc. Kills me. Should have had a bunch of perfect exams except for dumb stuff like that. Okay, so now let's group things together and rewrite this equation in terms of Vx. Here's my Vx. I have 120 as a coefficient here. It's going to be 1 over 20. I have 1 over J5 as my coefficient here. And then here I have 1 over 12 plus 16 J. J16. That is equal to, this is just some number that I'm going to 
put over on the other side. So here, this is minus, right? When I bring it to the other side, the minus gets undone because I'm just going to add it. So then this becomes 100 minus J, 50. That is over 20. And this here, plus, and this is going on the other side, so it's going to be the negative of that. So minus 140 plus J, 30. That is over 12 plus 16 J. I'm going to verify that this matches because the most painful part in solving this problem was um, calculator error and stupid little plus minus errors. That was actually the hardest part. Setting up the equations wasn't bad at all because, well, it just wasn't. So let me double check to make sure my equation is set up correctly. 120, J5, 12 plus J16. J12 here. Hang on. 120, J5. This should be VX, J15. Nuts. J5, 12 plus J16, 20, 100 minus J50, over 20, minus 140, 140, so I have 140 plus J. Oh, see what I mean? That's such a pain. So this was a minus here, then it becomes a plus here. Thank goodness I solved it in advance. Okay, so this was a minus on this side. When I bring it to the other side, it becomes a plus again. So I've got plus 140 plus J30, 12 plus 16J. That is correct. Now, this I claim, I had to do this piece by piece, like adding it one piece at a time just to get it accurately. This, when you add these two numbers together, you should get 10.4 minus J 7.2. When you add these three fractions together, you should get 0 0.08 minus 0 0.24 J. Great. So now we are at this point. We're here. We have V sub X is equal to 10.4 minus J 7.2. That is over 0 0.08 minus 0 0.24 J. Well, make sure you have your parentheses well, you know, don't have any print. If you're making a mistake, chances are you have some kind of parentheses error on your calculator. So, just be careful about that. This is 40 plus J30. That's another piece of information that I can use. I'm going to set that here. V sub X, that's equal to 40 plus J30. And that's what Spice told me it should be. So I believe it. Now, we have that information. Naturally, we want to do a no voltage at V1. So no voltage at V1. Well, from here to here, that current, and don't forget, by the way, that no voltage is an application of Kirchhoff's current law, which means the sum in and out of a node, uh, the sum of the currents in and out of the node is equal to zero. That minus that. So V1 minus Vx over 12 plus J16. Plus this current right here, V1 over negative J10. Plus 
Well, look at this. This is just a piece of wire, right? That means this node is really this node here because it's just it's electrically equivalent. Just a piece of wire, a jumper between here and here. So electrically, they are the same point. So this is really also the V1. Here, I have an IG going in there. And IG is that. And since it's going into the node, that makes it a negative number. So, by the passive sign convention, minus I sub G. Minus I sub G. Plus, over here, since this is electrically the same point, we've got V1 minus VG. V1 minus VG. That is equal to over Z. All of those currents sum up to equal zero. Well, this is good news that I found VX because I know what V1 is. You told me. I know what VX did. I just saw that. So V1, IG. I know what IG is. They gave me that. And I know what VG is because they also gave me that. So the only thing that I don't know in this equation is actually Z. And that was what I was trying to solve for. So that's why I was very happy that I leapt into solving for V sub X and it happened to lead me to a happy place which is one equation, one unknown, with a Z. Now we start substituting things in. So, one second. V1. We know that V1 is 140 plus J30 because the book told us. So now I'm going to substitute that 140 plus J30. Got it. 140 plus J30. Great. Here's another 140 plus J30. 140 plus J30. And another one right here, which I'm going to write sideways because I don't have board space. So that's 140 plus J30. Great. Now, what else do we need? Vx. We found out what Vx was, and we know that it's right because we verified the spice modeling. Vx is 40 plus J30. Great. What else is there? I sub G. I sub G, we know, is 30 plus J, 20, because the book told us. So, I sub G goes in here as 30 plus J, 20. Wrap it in parentheses because it gets a minus in front of it. And the last piece is V sub G. And V sub G, I'm out of color, so we are back to... Green. So V sub G is 100 minus J50, wrap it in parentheses because it's get a minus in front of it, 100 minus J50. So this is an awfully ugly thing to add together. So I'm going to give you guys some check figures because again, since this was so ugly, it took me a while to get the right answer. So from this, if you do this, when you do that, simplify that fraction, you should get the first term should be reduced to 3 minus J4. The second term should reduce to, the second term should reduce to, minus 3 plus J14. This just goes on the other side. I'll get to that in just one second. This, this numerator, which currently has 140 plus J30 minus 100 minus J50. So 140 minus 100 is 40. J30 plus, one fifth plus 50 is J80. So this simplifies to be 40 
plus J80 over Z. And that is equal to, drop that over here, 30 plus J20. Okay, now we continue simplifying and it's much easier now. So those are your check figures. If you didn't get those numbers, check parentheses. That has been my personal culprit, is wrapping the parentheses in the correct place. This reduces to, well, so this reduces to the threes go away. This becomes J10. So, this is J10. And then you subtract J10 from both sides. So you see that? This is plus J10, so minus J10, and minus J10 would give me 30 plus J10. So my new equation is 40 plus J80 over Z is equal to 30 plus J10. Great. Now I have Z down to a simple algebra equation that I can solve. Z is just 40 plus J80 over 30 plus J10. And that, my friend, is 2 plus J10. So the impedance is 2 plus J2. And that's that. If this video helped you, be sure to share it and like the Facebook page. Thanks.